Dear viewers, my guest today is many things rolled into one. She is a writer, she is a poet, she is an artist. She is also a book lover. She promotes artists. She is a good human being to begin with. I think it's time to explore her because she has stayed away from limelight for too long. Warm welcome to the show, Suma Thank you very much. So what are you actually? <laughs> <laughs> like you said, it's very difficult to explain. Eh? But uh, I don't think one should explain too many things uh, when uh, one lives a full life because uh, that spoils a lot of things. But most of your knowledge has come from where? Because, you know, you seem to know a lot about books, to painters, to artists, to everything. Study, that's all. Okay, you're interested in books to begin yes, with, is it? Yes, yeah. You're a voracious reader, aren't you? Yes. Or you stopped reading I've always now because been. you read almost <laughs> all the books that were printed. No, 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 nothing like that. You yeah. could never have enough of reading. Huh? Okay. Yeah. But you're also a collector of books. Yes, I'm a collector of books, art, and I'm also interested in botany and ornithology and things like that. Okay. But... Uh, These days you're writing about plants and also birds. Yes, think. yeah. Right? You also yeah. promoted a lot of artists, haven't you? No, not many, just three of them. Yeah. yeah. One particular person was like Peter Watson. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And you had this person paint for a lot of people. Yes. I'm sure at one point you were selling more than people sold bread in the uh, <laughs> bakeries. <laughs> uh. Okay. So, how did you get interested in books so much? That I'm sure that you also got a lot of other people to read books. A lot of people get interested in books. Reading books mainly starts with childhood, listening to stories as child mm. children. And then my father used to buy a lot of books okay. and we had a writer in the family. Mm. So that helped a great deal. Okay. Mm. But you were growing up like just any other young girl in your youth, but mm. you actually developed some interests that were quite strange in terms of, you know, that's not normally seen. I mean, people do read books, but what no, kind of I books? No, I think in Novels. our times... But the kind of books that you've read are not the usual books, not the kind of books that everyone reads. You I read search from, for rare books, yeah. because uh, there you find really entertaining books and like right now I'm reading Vladimir Nabokov's The Gift, which is a very little known book. Okay. He is famous for a book called Lolita, Lolita. <laughs> but that I do not like at all. But I like his book, uh, The Real Life of Sebastian Knight, which is great and Pale Fire, which is in verse form, that's also a great book. Okay. And uh, the gift I picked up just by accident, and it's a great book. One thing about you is that you have a phenomenal memory. You seem to remember everything that you've read, don't you? No, you started no. forgetting things. <laughs> no, not really. I have a memory only for books and the birds and botany <laughs> okay. and things like that. Not any not bad for, things. Not for people and <laughs> okay. other mundane things in okay. life. Yeah. But you seem to remember all the things that you've read. Mostly, yes. I yeah, remember. you remember the writer to the book to what's written in the book. To, you can also so easily quote from books. Yeah, that's because it makes such a great impression on me. Okay. Nothing more. Uh, it's not just the love of books. I think you have dedicated yourself to these things because, you know, you also stayed away from TV a great deal because uh, I even know that you don't even watch TV. Yes, we do not watch uh, TV in the house. You because, in the sense, uh, all of you. All of us the husband, because, the yeah, children. and the children because we wanted to inculcate the habit of reading in children. Mm. What happened was my second son, when he went to boarding school, he wrote back saying uh, that he wanted to watch WWF on uh, TV. So, Papa, please get us a TV set in the house. Okay. My husband thought that WWF was worldwide fun for nature. <laughs> okay. And he got... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's when he got a TV okay, set in the house. It was World Wrestling Federation. <laughs> it was World Wrestling Federation. We never knew. <laughs> okay. yeah. So, what happened after that? After that, the children watching TV, but limited uh, timings. Okay, yeah. but it's uh, like you know, you never told them that. To no, no, that they told. should not watch TV. No, we did not that. say that. But there were so many books around. I'm sure even they yeah. started reading books. Yeah, because I used to read to them when they were children, mm. and they went to a special school called Shishugriha where they were encouraged to read more than watch TV. Okay, so that was also your uh, home is like a museum and also like a library. Uh, it's also some kind of a uh, uh, second-hand bookstore. You also started a second-hand bookstore. Yes, called Sanduka. Yeah. You brought in a lot of those books into your home yourself. 
<laughs> yes, because they <laughs> were unsold. <laughs> giving them away. Yeah. Okay. But uh, the thing about even choosing the right book, that's one thing a lot of people have difficulty in, yeah. in doing. Uh, to be able to read the book that fits you, that suits you. Yeah. Every book doesn't go with you. Yes. Isn't it so? Yeah. Uh, you can go by reviews. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sometimes a book becomes so much a part of you and a uh, book remains with you also. So I think it's so important that you make the right choice in picking up the book itself. Right? And keep it forever. I only like to lend those books. Mm. I don't like to sell them away. Okay. So I lend them around the place and then... There are some books that you've read many, many times over. Yes, many Why? times. Because they give me so much pleasure. Like John Fowles, uh, The French Lieutenant's Woman. Uh. I read it quite often. Uh. And uh, I it's read the same the thing that you read, right? What is that that you Because find each different? time you read, you develop new insights into the characters. Okay. Mm. And any other book that you love the most? Yeah, The Silver Pilgrimage by M. Anantanarayanan. Okay. And A Slave Laughs, which is a little known book by Shaukat ah, Osman. From Bangladesh. From Bangladesh. And that's one that you keep saying. Yeah, <laughs> that's a wonderful often. book. Eh? Yeah. yeah. And I like reading the short stories of Herman Hesse. Okay. Which are very good. They're fairy tales mm. and a little known book. Mm. And uh, Isaac Dinesen, okay. she's a Danish writer. Mm. She's written what is called Seven Gothic Tales. Oh. That's also good. And I like the poetry of U. R. Anantamurti, a Kannada okay. writer. But you also read Kannada books too. Yes. It's Even a chance that you read language, uh, I mean books in any language possible. <laughs> no, I've learnt only two languages, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. I But given a chance, you would have read books in any yeah, other language. Yeah, I wish I could read other languages okay. too, because... But you've read some translations. Yes, translations are very good. Mm. In especially Indian language books are um, much better than what you generally get in English. Mm. But do you read many books at a time? As two or three at do. a time, yeah. two or three at a time, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's very exciting too because you can actually shuffle according to your No, it depends on, on where you keep the book. Yeah. <laughs> one, one in the toilet. One, the other, one in the bed, no, no, in the, nothing okay. in the toilet. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. one in the bed, one on the dining table One on the dining yes. table, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, but with all this you still lead a very normal life in the sense you cook, you travel, you, you, you meet people, you, you... Well, all those things have to be done. Okay. There's no other choice, but right? But one of the excuses people give for not reading books is that I don't get time to read books. Well, uh, it uh, depends on your priorities. Okay. You have to read your newspapers and your books every day, otherwise your thinking power goes down, I okay. feel. Yeah. But uh, there is uh, this popular literature uh, to what should be read. Because sometimes what needs to be read is not as uh, attractive as popular literature. Because popular literature keeps you going, in the sense, you know, it takes you along as, as you read it. But sometimes, you know, some books are really, really a little, little difficult to, to stay with. So, I mean, it could be very intellectually engaging. So do you think that, you know, I mean, people need to be, uh, tr what do you call, put in the right track from the beginning to be able to read not, difficult not really. books in a sense, not, not, not in terms of the way they've written, but something that engages your mind? Not really, because when they're in school or college, they know which books are good or which books are more intellectually stimulating. Okay. They learn all that. But later on, they choose what they want to read. Okay. So you cannot really fight that. Okay, but nowadays the complaint about uh, uh, children watching TV is that there's too much sex and violence. But uh, that's not something that you don't see in uh, the books, because certainly there's enough of sex and violence even in books. It depends on the book, really. It depends on how it is but there portrayed. Are some beautiful books, great books, with a lot of sex and violence in them. Well, uh, they can be read provided they're old enough yeah. and old enough to understand it. So who guides them? Because everybody would have not read the book that uh, the other person wants to read, right? The teachers can always guide them, the parents can always guide them. Okay. Uh. Putting the book in a child's um, hands is a very difficult task because you need to know first of all whether that's the right book. Uh, so you suggest that parents themselves should have read enough to be able to guide their children. Yes, that's I feel that. something that's an impossibility, isn't it? No, no. I think you can always finish reading a book and give it to your child. Okay, because books can also give you knowledge about a lot of other things, yeah. not just about uh, characters and dates and uh, locations, but also about paintings, to literature, to archaeology, to architecture, to science, to everything. 
Yes, after a while, you, when the child has grown up, uh -huh. you know what his interests are. Mm. So you pick up books according to his interest. That will also help and the child will concentrate reading books on those. Okay. Um, but uh, most books are available in bookstores. But why um, have you uh, taken this interest in uh, second-hand books? Because they're cheaper, that's all. Okay. That's the only reason? Or Mostly. Uh, do you, you also, you, that, you find know, some, uh, rare some rare books. books uh, but how is it so? Because nowadays, you know, most of the books are reprinted. Some of the oldest books are also available, like something in Amazon.com, like any book is available. I don't almost. work on the computer, so I don't know about <laughs> Amazon.com. Okay. Even about keeping these old books is a little uh, difficult because of these um, silverfish yeah. <laughs> and, and some other insects which yeah. may even eat up the books. So you need to also maintain the books. That's one thing that people find it very difficult. I know. My children always complain that my house is like a museum, yeah. but I can't help it. Okay. I have to build three houses to accommodate all my books. But what about this technology like uh, the Amazon Kindle that you hold it in your hand with a, with a screen, the, 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 the small uh, gadget with which you actually read? Uh, I've never 50, done it, so books. I cannot tell you about it. No, but it. people still say the experience of holding a book in, in its physical form, like printed on paper, uh, is, is, a, is such a different experience altogether. It's a different experience, so? yes. Turning and the, the smell pages, of the book is... Yeah, and the holding it, the yeah. feeling it. I can't read even a short message uh, on the uh, computer because I get a yeah, eye, eye ache. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like uh, one, one Nobel Prize winning uh, author, uh, I don't get her name at this moment, uh, American, black woman. Toni Morrison? Ah, she said that she just has... 26 letters of the English alphabet with her and she has to create a whole world with it. Colors, sounds, music, everything. It doesn't really sound so magical. Well, uh, Just 26 letters and you can create so much with it. And the words actually jump out and create. <laughs> uh, I suppose it depends on how you're brought up. Mm. I was not brought up with machines. Mm. And I was not even brought up with a typewriter. Mm. So I find it difficult to associate. And you like to live like that? Itself, yeah, still. I like to live like that. I don't even have a cell phone. <laughs> and you still believe in the magic of books? I still believe in the magic of words. Books, I don't know, because okay. the magic of words as listened to, as heard, music, mm. okay. all that. And yeah. you also try to, as much as possible, get other people interested too. Yes, I Not have a that circle you force of people, uh, but you still, you yeah. know, try to because when they, anybody comes to your house, they cannot escape the books and the paintings. I encourage them to borrow the books that yeah, I read. So and, good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Many you of should them, have been a teacher. Well, uh, I did teach the blind for a while. Yeah, you did, uh, yeah. but but maybe a regular school where at least children could have learnt a little. No, about. no, I'm quite happy with the roles I've played in my <laughs> yeah. life. Okay. I would not have liked to be a teacher. See, nowadays people watch uh, movies or even watch television because, you know, uh, it's an effortless activity mm. that you don't even have to think so much. Everything unfolds and unravels in front of you. And, you know, you just need to experience. And uh, what you see is uh, believed to be more impressive, uh, impactful. So uh, that's one of the reasons why people say, why do I have to read a book? But have you experienced uh, such a feeling where a book has, you know, made you feel, has turned you inside, where it's made you weep and all that? Yeah, sure. But even cinema can do it. It, no, no, it but, is a but very has, powerful... Has ever a book done it to you? Oh, yes. You know? Books have For always instance? done it. Yeah. For instance? For instance, uh, um, Vikram Seth's uh, poetry. Huh? Yeah. Thorn, Thorn Amitav Birch. Ghosh. Thornbirds Thorn uh, did it to me, so I mean particular one, particular when no, she goes and sees the I dead bodies. No, what I read is Colin McCullough's uh, Tim about a... Uh, yeah, yeah, that, which is actually made into a, a film and, film and Mel Gibson yeah, acted uh, in the lead role. That was, was a wonderful book. I haven't yeah. seen the film, I, but, but I can imagine it, the book was... But it's such a beautiful film. Yeah. And you also... Uh, try to look at everything in a very objective manner, particularly this book where, uh, uh, what do you say, Death in Paris, right? What's it called? Yeah, Death in Venice. Death in Venice. Thomas Mann. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but that too is such a dark uh, Well, story. the film was uh, very impressionistically done. Okay. It was good in its own way if you hadn't read the book. Mm. But what I did not like about the 
film was that there was a slight suggestion of homosexuality in the pedophilia, uh, pedophilia or homosexuality yeah. in the uh, film which was not there in the book. Yeah, but there, that was not at all about pedophilia. Yeah. <laughs> it's just about a man liking a boy. Yeah. That is all it is. Just yeah. just liking the very sight of him. Yeah. But it was, the movie became a little suggestive in trying to say, oh, if he likes, liking can only be this, nothing yeah. else. Yeah. Okay. But maybe because the film was made much later. That's the tragedy with a lot of uh, books that are made into movies, right? Most uh, movies cannot uh, do justice to the books that they are based well, on. Well, Lawrence of Arabia was a better uh, film than uh, book. Um, the book can, like could Frederick have got... Like Frederick uh, uh, Day of the Jackal also yeah. was made into a good film. Yeah. But it's really difficult because, you know, you can imagine things up. For instance, you would have imagined up a character to be in a certain way yeah. or, you know, to be somebody, something. But then, you know, when you see it on the screen, if that's not the person, you cannot relate at all. Yeah, that's because the directors and uh, the screenplay writers are also coming into play there. They mm. have their own interpretation of how the characters should be. Mm. And in case of John Fowles, who did uh, The French Lieutenant's Woman, he was there where the film was being shot. Okay. And he directed a little bit of that also. Okay. So that was a good mm. film. But do you feel in the modern context, uh, writers like, Thomas Hardy would n never do well because, you know, with five, six pages of description of just one location. No, <laughs> they would do well. Yeah? Oh, yes. It's too much, isn't it? Like, no, too no, heavy. No, no, It depends on... For instance, uh, by the time you go to the fourth line, you forgot to the first line. There are many popular writers now um, who still write like that, um, very reflective, like Hilary Mantel, who has written about uh, uh, Cromwell. I forget the name of the book, which won the Booker Prize. Mm. It's not a short book. Okay. And uh, James, uh, J.M. Coetzee, mm. he was a Booker Prize winner too. Okay. His book uh, called Elizabeth Costello and Slow Man and the Life and Times of uh, Michael K. They're all very descriptive okay. and still they're popular. But uh, don't you feel uh, uh, quite... Uh, um, surprised about this attitude that, you know, some people think it's sufficient if they read uh, books in English because that's the way we are educating our children. Uh, they are quite removed from the kind of literature that we have in this land, uh, Kannada books that I'm talking about. Well, at least... There is uh, so much that you've read and there's yeah. so much that you so much that you've engaged yourself in, there's so much that you've written for um, Kannada magazines and uh, yeah. uh, that you've also met a lot of authors and... Uh, but at least uh, translations are available, uh, but so there is they can some be kind of disdain, contempt, right? About perhaps the mm, the, not the really. kind of literature not matching up to not not with people who have actually read it and understood, but with like um, children coming from a certain background who are not actually exposed, perhaps. Yeah, to, because they read it as something strange, uh, something alien to them, mm. because they do not live that life. Okay. That you cannot help. Because uh, if the parents are living uh, uh, a life which is conducive to their region, eh, then, uh, you know, it works out well that the children can read translations and understand them well. Mm. But otherwise, you cannot expect the Like the Macaulay's uh, mm, his famous quote that, that uh, the cupboard full of uh, Western literature is equal to all the literature of the Orient. Uh, maybe yeah, that's where but it's actually he also started. said that to teach uh, the Indians English and you can change their culture. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You don't have to do anything else. Okay, but that did not actually happen. I think we stuck to our culture. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he was hoping to do that, I think. Okay. Yeah. It's not evinced much interest in people to read Kannada literature in Kannada is because some of the translations are of very poor quality. If the writers do their own translations, then they do it yeah. quite well. Yeah. Okay. And your interest in paintings. Uh, if given a chance, you would have bought uh, uh, the best paintings in this world with all the money you could have put together. <laughs> no, it's not just a question of money, it's a question of taste. Okay, but you've also tried to buy paintings with whatever resources you have from whomever you could buy. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I've done that because, uh, for one thing, to encourage new artists. Okay. And some of the art that I bought has fetched good prices later on. Okay. So that's gratifying. Mm. And uh, these days I am concentrating on 
high, higher price start, mm. which is also good. Mm. But um, generally, art is something that I do not look upon as investment. Okay. I look upon it as decoration on the walls or thought-provoking uh, conversation and things like that. Why is that you see more than what other people see? <laughs> Anything that I don't buy. think so. I see, <laughs> I meet a lot of people who see even more, more than uh, what okay. I see. Okay. Yeah. But you're interested in poetry too. Yes. Aren't you? Mm. And drama. Yeah. Right? I did direct a couple of plays. Yeah. I worked with the late uh, Snehalata Reddy long ago okay. and there was a group called Abhinaya okay. in those days. And you are interested in agriculture now? That's because my though, son is though, though, you, though you call your well-educated uh, husband a carpenter because he has, <laughs> he, has a, he has a wood store. Yes. Uh, right? Yes. Okay, but you have had the best of encouragement coming from him because he has tolerated you to a great extent. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. He's enjoyed my company. That is something more than tolerable. Okay. But you know, your investments in paintings and your reckless buying of books and <laughs> you're spending time with writing and books and yeah, your friends to begin with. Well, I tolerate him. <laughs> Okay. All his doings, I don't know, I cannot mention them here, but... Uh, <laughs> but, but isn't it nice to actually have a husband who, who, who tolerates, who understands, who comes along and who also tries to, tries to explore and somewhere try to see that if, if perhaps what she is doing is good, maybe I too need Absolutely. to Absolutely. The best thing about my husband is he's capable of change okay. every day. He's not the same as he was yesterday. Okay. So every day he changes and that's the best thing about him. Changes for you more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so <laughs> sure about that. For him. Okay. Yeah. But your children too have been uh, yeah. quite understanding. I think from, from loving your paintings for what, uh, what you put them up. Well, my for... children, especially the second one, is more interested in its financial implications than anything oh. else. They are catching up with the times okay. actually, they have to, okay. otherwise they would not survive, you know. Okay. Uh, they are a little more materialistic than I was hoping, but uh, <laughs> I think it is the best thing okay. that they are like that. Nowadays, uh, you are involved in writing about uh, birds in Kodagu. Yeah, birds in Kodagu, because I spent a long time in Coog planting trees, mm. so I was able to watch the birds Mm. And uh, I wrote six articles about them for a Kodagu newspaper. Mm. You also are uh, keenly interested in agriculture. Well, that's because I'm interested in ecology and environment. Mm. Because one day you rudely said about uh, some community of people that the only culture they had was agriculture. <laughs> 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 yeah, but, okay. I, I but, agriculture, but agriculture is the basis for a lot agriculture of Agriculture is too. the root of all <laughs> okay. cultures, uh, yeah. Okay, but you're also a person who studies uh, uh, community behavior quite closely because you're quite interested in culture, history and, uh, and uh, anthropology, a lot of other things. Who knows what all you're interested in, right? Well, uh, it just comes by the way because as you study some things, other things also come into play. Mm. And you pick up information on the way and okay. so that's how it happens. But you encourage a lot of people to do a lot of things. You got a lot of people interested in books, a lot of people interested in art, a lot of people interested in writing, a lot of people interested in, uh, um, what do you call, poetry. A lot of people have also taken inspiration from you and have also become something. I remember you even encouraging me to get into theatre and writing and painting. Yeah, but you haven't stuck to it, have you? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, sometimes you feel, uh, do you, that, that people can be more sensitive and sensible if they really let go of all these materialistic uh, trappings and no. are a little more inclined towards art and literature? Well, uh, the curriculum in the schools should encourage that, I feel. Okay. The curriculum in the schools should encourage uh, students to study more of art and literature than economics mm. and uh, business studies. I feel that you never change for anyone. You've just been the way you are and you're happy the way you are. Is that so? People I'm not always happy. Okay. Uh, there were times when I was unhappy. Okay, but people are quite 
curious about you as to <laughs> who this person is, what does she like, and who is she, what what does she do, right? Isn't that the I case? Suppose but that is, after a while, they just resign and say, okay, we accept her the way she is. Well, that's the best way to be because uh, that's how you are. You're like flowing water all the time. You're never the same all the time. Oh, eh? You don't become stagnant yeah, and then decay. Yeah. So that would be unnatural. So you're happy with the way you led your life, and you're leading your yes. life. Very happy. Yes. Yeah. Uh. Nothing to teach anyone. If people want to learn <laughs> something from you, let them. You just said that I've taught people, so okay. I take your word for it uh, that I've, you know, more or less inspired people to okay. do certain things. Suma Panama, wish you all the best in all that you plan to do too. Okay. <laughs> Thank in you very much. Write more. Paint more, promote more, yeah. and be happy. Thank, Thank you very you. much.